Good morning, everyone. My name is Ginger Birkenbill. Thank you so much for coming to this workshop this morning on a Friday. I noticed some amazing people in here and someone is actually sharing their new bot to take meeting notes. So thank you for sharing that new technology, Alex. Uh, my name again is Ginger Birkenbill and I am the CEO of Burke Creative, which is a visual identity and brand strategy company um, doing work for global brands like Google, and Meta and Advocate and other companies. Um, I'm really excited to be sharing my information here on the best platform in Chicago, the business and consumer protection platform, which is amazing. So thank you so much for having me here. I also am the founder of a podcast called the Honest Field Guide Podcast, which is a podcast platform that highlights thought leaders and business people from all over the world. I just recently interviewed an amazing um, woman uh, leader named Doreen Lorenzo. She's heading up a university um, design program at University of Texas, which is really great. And I'm also the songwriter of a band called Utah Carol. And I just recently founded a nonprofit organization called Journey of Gratitude, a 501c3. And it's designed to help entrepreneurs and small business owners just like you, hopefully, and especially underrepresented business owners understand how to use different technology tools and how to actually start up their businesses. So if you want to connect with me on Journey of Gratitude, you can go to journeyofgratitude.org or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I did leave some notes in the chat. I love for you to connect with me on my newsletter. Um, and there's other information that I share on my newsletter, which not only is Google, but also related to artificial intelligence, how to use chats and things, chatbots and things like that. So in this workshop particularly, we're gonna spend some time exploring the concept of professional branding um, and how it can help you build your career, whether you're looking for a new job, whether you're looking to expand your business or just to network, depending on what chapter you are in your career, Personal branding and professional branding is critical in order to be successful. You're going to learn how your professional brand and career story can help you quickly get potential clients and collaborators and let them know who you are and what you're bringing to the table. Um, a few of the exercises in the workshop might involve some writing. So if you want to have a Google Doc open or your trusty old notepad, um, it's really helpful to do that. So let's get started a little bit. Um, so before we get, I wanted to share a little bit, though, about why this work actually matters to me. I did mention my journey of gratitude organization, but I really want to help um, entrepreneurs and students and people in different phases of their career learn how to experiment and jump into places like social media, which is a great place to establish your brand. Um, I want people to understand how to create a personal brand and how to use these social media tools with intention and with goals so that you're not afraid to thrive online. A lot of us are really afraid to share our stories and this workshop hopefully will help you get a little bit better at that. I actually launched my company, Burt Creative, after I started my country band, Utah Carol. And I really wanted to do this because I needed more autonomy. I wanted to be intentional finding customers and I also wanted to own my own brand and also sort of have control of all the products that might come out of my brand, right? Intellectual property, for example. I wanna make sure that I own my work and I own my message. Now in today's environment, it's definitely getting more challenging to control, to control these things because of what's happening online. But you know, if you have a strong personal brand and you're operating from your core with intention, it makes it a lot easier and more seamless to communicate online, whatever companies you're running or whatever brands you're launching, whatever, wherever you are in your career process, right? So over time through my personal brand experience, and if you type Ginger Birkenbill, in Google, you can look at all the tabs and you can find out all the things I've been doing. And the reason everything is sort of showing up that way on Google, for example, and even Bing, is because I've spent years cultivating my professional brand, not only in person, but also online. And so this is kind of what we're gonna be doing today. I've also been able to transfer, trans, transform my mindset around how these tools can be used not to consume, but to create. And that's something really important I want you to think about through this entire presentation is how do I do everything that Ginger is talking with me about today? How can I use these ideas and strategies to create, not consume? And if you are a consumer, if that's how you live your life, if you consume everything, at least try to understand when you're looking to consume, how can you use what you're consuming to create something? So eat and then go back and share it and do something fresh and new with whatever you're consuming. That's how I like to think about this. Um, I also want to just sort of mindset again, you know, just be curious, be open to technology. There's a lot of new exciting things happening with artificial intelligence, with chatbots. There's a really great experience you can try with Google. It's called BARD, B-A-R-D. If you don't already know what that is, type in Google BARD. 
and sign up so you can participate in this amazing and wonderful, exciting, um, you know, opportunity using artificial intelligence to help you solve problems and create really interesting things, right? So again, this is another place to learn with intention and don't be afraid of the technology because you really want to learn so that you can help grow your business and your career or whatever it is you're trying to do because obviously you're here for a reason, you're here to learn and you wanna figure out how to do something different or how to grow or, or how to make more money. You know, everybody's trying to figure out how to make more money, right? Um, so anyway, I just wanted to share a couple of those things. I would love for you to connect with me on LinkedIn. Again, that is my number one platform for business. Um, you know, when I make connections with people, I network, um, I look for opportunities, I help other people find opportunities on that platform. So if you don't have a profile on LinkedIn, I highly recommend you get one because that's a great platform to share your professional brand. That's really the greatest place to do it. Um, you know, other platforms like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, they have different reasons um, to, to conduct business, but LinkedIn is really a fantastic place to do it. Um, oh, the last thing I would like to mention is when you're online, again, try to understand your intentions to be there because what happens, especially now, uh, you start, you go online, you use social media, and it ends up consuming you. Um, unless you know why you're there and you're paying attention and you're not just scrolling and sort of zoning out. I mean, it's okay to do that once in a while sometimes, but if you're in business and you're trying to make money, be very intentional and clear about why you're online. Because if you are constantly checking yourself and how do you check yourself when you're online? You know, look up, look around, go look out the window, look at the sun. You know, they, there's this phrase out there right now called touching grass. I mean, literally you can go outside and touch grass and then you can, you know, bring yourself back to center. All right, so I want to get started. Um, if you want to take a deep cleansing breath before we start, like, a, you know, a, and then breathe out. It's always good to do this when you're, uh, you know, working in technology to make sure you center yourself, which is what I was just talking about. So, all right. So today we're going to talk about what professional branding can mean for your career and how it's never early or never late to start building your own brand. We're gonna start by covering what a professional brand is and how companies use your brands to build trust with their customers and their clients. And then we're gonna talk about building your professional brand and how it can help you grow your career, no matter what type of work you do. And then we're gonna go over three steps that you can take to building your professional brand, which is defining your brand, building your online presence and growing your network. And this is about a 45 minute or so class and I am gonna leave time at the end for questions. I don't know if BACP can bring people off speaker, but I do know the chat is available, so I highly encourage you to use the chat. And the other thing I want to encourage you to do is say hello to people in the chat. Introduce yourself, you know, as long as you know you feel safe doing so. I mean, some people are kind of sneaking on their mobile phone from work trying to launch their business and they don't want their boss to know. But, you know, share your name in the chat, share your uh, best contact. I wouldn't really put a phone number in, but maybe share your LinkedIn profile or your Instagram Instagram profile, if that's a profile you like to use. And then let people know what your business is. Definitely share your website if you have one. But if you do share your website, share a link to the on your website that either creates an action for someone to take. For example, fill out a form to sign up for your newsletter, which I put in the chat, um, connect with you on social, watch a video, or you know hire me for work. I mean, something like that. It's really good to not send people on a wild goose chase when you're sharing your brand with the world. Always give someone something to do. Just going to your website is not necessarily useful to people that have an action in their mind that they wanna take or they wanna go there or do something specific. So just keep that in mind. So I'd love for you to do that in chat. And I think um, all you need to do is go to the chat bot and in the chat box and just put your information in there and everybody will see it. Okay. All right, so let's get started. Um, I want you to first think about a company you like. Maybe it's a restaurant, um, a clothing brand, a particular product you enjoy. I want you to think about that. My favorite brand right now, what is my favorite brand right now? I think my favorite brand right now is Anthropology. That's my favorite fashion brand. And I'm actually wearing Anthropology earrings right now, which I love because I'm feeling like sunshine on a Friday, right? It is sunny in Chicago, which is where I'm, which is where I'm beaming from right now. But think about a brand that you like. And I want you to think about this company. What images come to mind? What feelings do you associate with the brand? Um, I associate, um, you know, sort of free, pretty, colorful, 
um, light, um, energetic, and definitely high fashion, but also casual, comfortable. That's how I feel when I think about anthropology. Oh, the last thing I think is expensive because it is kind of expensive. So I don't shop there as often as I like because I have to save money for my children for college. Okay. So who is the ideal customer of this brand that you're thinking of? Who are they selling their products or services to? What sets their product apart from competitors with similar offerings? So when I think about anthropology, their competitor in my mind is free people. And I try to understand, sometimes I actually do get a little bit confused with the, of the difference between the two brands, but then I think about it, I'm thinking, okay, free people usually has um, a little bit more upscale, high end clothing that is more comfortable. For example, they have really, really great cargo pants. Um, and they're a little bit high end, right? They're a little bit more expensive than anthropology cargo pants, for example, and they don't make as many. So you might find a few items that you won't see on everyone on the street, right? So how does this advertising of this brand that you're thinking of, how does it make you feel about using their product or service, right? I know when I use anthropology or free people, it helps me feel more beautiful. And gosh knows, I need to form you more beautiful because I am definitely not getting any younger. I feel younger, but I know like, I'm like, I need clothes that make me feel you know, fresh and alive, right? And then how do they maintain consistency in their advertising? Are you able to look at one of their ads that, and, to, and you're able to understand, oh, that's from X company, that's from this brand. So all of these experiences you're interacting with or hearing about a company, this is part of a company's brand. And I want you to think about that for yourself as well. Like, how are you communicating? Are you communicating consistently? Do you have a through line to everything you're putting online, whether it's for your personal brand or your professional brand, right? Think about things like that. So companies are hiring marketing professionals like me for creative to help them build their brands. Um, a company's logo, advertising language, even the colors and fonts are considered part of branding. That's considered part of branding. But a brand isn't always you know, made by deliberate choices. Sometimes it's something that's built over time when people interact with a product or service or even what they hear about a brand, right? Um, from the company or from the people that work there. So think about this. The whisper campaigns of a company are really important, but that's part of the brand. So listen carefully. What do people say about the brand when the brand's not watching or the brand's not monitoring? Although they're, it's kind of tough these days for a brand not to monitor because there's so much technology to help companies understand customer sentiment. But nevertheless, you know, when you're talking about a brand, you know, with your friends at dinner or when you're out, what are you saying about this brand? Whether you're speaking it out loud or what, whatever it is that you're wearing, you know, things like that. Those are conversations that are taking place and that's what happens over time. Think about Nike, for example. Um, Nike has an amazing brand. There's a film out about Nike now. When you think about Nike, you probably, well, it depends on, you know, what generation you're in, but a lot of people think about Michael Jordan. I know I do, you know, if it, were, if it weren't for Michael Jordan, I don't think Nike or, you know, Bill Knight would be where they are today. There's just no way. Um, so think about that because that is part of brand. You know, people like Michael Jordan, what's said about it? You know, what are the the, the fascinating images associated with Nike? You know, the, the you know, the feeling of life and 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 liberty and being able to run and be free. That's kind of like the feelings you might get from Nike. You know, how are you thinking about that for your own company? All right, but you're a person, you're not a company, right? So what does branding have to do with your actual career? So just as companies, brands communicate their qualities. You can build and market yourself as well as you grow your career. It takes time. You have to be patient. Unless you're a celebrity, you have to be patient. Always have to tell people that it takes time to build a brand and it definitely takes time to build a brand online. You have to be intentional, which is what I talked about in the beginning. So your professional brand, though, is made up of the unique combination of your career story, along with your quality, skills and experiences. It's a way of letting professional potential employers clients, institutions, colleagues, you know, whatever, mentors, advisors, get a sense of who you are and what you have to offer to them. So a few slides back, I asked you to think about a specific company and I asked a lot of questions about how you perceive their brand. You can also ask questions about your own personal brand when you do this. What images and feelings do you want people to associate with you and your work? What do you want? What qualities do you want potential employers collaborators, people that you want to go into business with to know that you possess. Who is your ideal employer? Who's your client? Who's your ideal customer? Do you even know? Sometimes it takes time. I didn't realize until maybe a decade into my career 
who my ideal customer and clients were. There's now I know, now I understand based on my characteristics and what I can deliver, the types of people that I not only want to bring into my environment, but how I want to share what I know with them, right? So I kind of have an idea now, but you really need to think about this. What sets you apart from people in the exact same industry or on similar career paths? That's really hard for a lot of us to do, right? What is our competitive advantage? What is our you know, value proposition? Sometimes it takes people years and years and years to understand what makes them different. For example, if you're an independent entrepreneur or you know, a lawyer, for example, there's 25,000 other lawyers doing very similar things to what you're doing in the industry. How do you make yourself stand apart from those other lawyers, for example? Think about that, right? How can you maintain brand consistency in your marketing, whether it's your website, social media posts, or in-person interactions? It's a lot to think about. And I know when you're looking online at people like me and others, you're like, wow, how do they do this? You know, some people have been cultivating this for a long time, so have patience. Other people are naturals at this. You know this, there's people out there right now, they're probably talking to you on a webinar like this or an inspirational talk that you saw last week right, that you saw last week, you're like, wow, this is really great. They're making me want to act. Some people have the natural gift of that. And some people, again, like I said, have to cultivate it. Whatever it is, have patience with yourself and it will eventually start working as long as you're consistent. So um, you may not necessarily have paid advertisements or shopping bags with your logo on them. Although nowadays it's really easy to do that and it's really inexpensive. Um, you probably have a resume and social media accounts which also reflect, reflect your professional brand. As you meet people, and you start building your network, a strong professional brand will help you leave a very lasting impression on people. And you know what they like they say, you know, believe the person the first time you see them. I think, please tell me in the chat, uh, which amazing black woman said that because I cannot, I'm blanking on, on who said it, but believe the person when you first see them. So that's why first impressions are really important. Sometimes it's tough, but thank you, Tina. I knew it was Maya Angelou, but I was just like, let me just, just because I know where my head is, I'm in webinar mode. So, you know, so thank you so much. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Tondra, for saying that. Yes. So it's important to realize that people do have an impression of you right away. So I know when you're an entrepreneur, or a small business owner, sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm about to go outside and I'm just going to the store. I'm just going to walk up the street and do X, Y, Z. Now, depending on where you are in your career, you might just go out however you look because, you know, as you mature in this world, you start really not paying so much attention to what other people think. I'm going to be really honest. You're just like, look, this is it. And this is who I am. However, again, depending on where you where you are in your career journey, you do have to think about how you're presenting yourself at all times because you never know who you're going to meet wherever you are at any given moment. It's incredible. The world is not as big as you think. Everything is local. So strong branding is very helpful for everyone in the job market, but it's even more crucial if, one, if you wanna start your own business or launch a freelance career. A great brand can help freelance or self-employed people, small business owners attract customers and gain a lot of opportunities, but also gain a network. So if you have a sense now of what professional branding can mean to you as an individual, try applying the same questions to a person in the public eye. So think of a public figure you admire. They could be a performer, an activist, a political figure, anyone, anyone in the public eye, and take a few moments to think about their personal brand. What images and feelings do you associate with them? What qualities do they possess? Who do you think their ideal customer, client, or target audience is? And yes, when you think about potential politicians or potential or politicians that exist right now, I know that they're not thinking of themselves like, okay, let me talk to my clients and customers. They're thinking about constituents. I don't, whatever you want to call it, constituents, clients, target audience, whatever. What sets them apart from people in the same industry, the same political arena, right? Um, or the people in this, are on the same career path. What makes them different? What makes them better? This, again, takes intentionality and research and listening and learning, right? How do they maintain brand consistency in their marketing projects or appearances? I remember years ago, um, before politicians started using social media, some of the politicians I remember talking to, giving advice to, they were like, I don't know why I need social media. Why should I use it? Nobody's, nobody's using social media and they were completely wrong. <laughs> You're obviously wrong. And in fact, um, the politicians that actually seized social media and really used it with intention and continue to use it with intention are winning and those that are not are losing. And let me just say this, 
politicians that are using social media are not always great politicians. So, you know, it really makes a difference to have yourself online and to be using social media because you will get attention if you're consistent. Not necessarily saying that your brand is great, but you will get more attention. So don't sleep on social, I guess I'd like to, I'd like to leave it at that. So the answers to all these questions, no matter what, reflect this person's brand or, you know, could potentially reflect you know, a politician's um, political aspirations. So pay attention and listen. And then as you're consuming information from others, think about how you can turn that around and use it for yourself to create something new for yourself and your own brand. So just like your favorite company has integrated their brand into everything they do, they do, there's their advertising, social media, in-person experiences, even their fonts and logos, you should do the same with your professional brand. You should do the same, do the same things. From your resume to your social media posts, your networking conversations, every interaction you have lets people know what you have to offer. So they always say, what is your elevator pitch? That's no joke. I mean, having something quick is always very helpful. A lot of us are multi-hyphenate, which is what I am. I am a multi-hyphenate. Um, it's very challenging sometimes for people that are not multi-hyphenates to understand exactly what you can do for them. A lot of times people that are offering you know, for, for asking you for help, they're not multi-hyphenates. Otherwise, they wouldn't be where you are, right? Because they're in a place where they have a lane, they have one job to do, and that's the only job they do. They're not really thinking in multiple ways. Entrepreneurs are different. We think differently. We are creative strategists. We have a thousand ideas in our heads. And let me just say this, employers want people like us because they need people with ideas, right? But the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, when you're a multi-hyphenate, it does still help to have some kind of a pitch. Now, for me, as an example, I have multiple pitches depending on who I'm talking to. If I'm talking to a creative director, I have a different story. If I'm talking to someone in the um, you know, energy industry, I have a different story. I talk about the work I've done for, uh, for climate change and things like that. If I'm talking to someone in the educational space, I have a different you know, pitch to, to share as well. So think about what you can say, because I know all of you have a zillion different things running in your minds, and it's hard to sometimes focus on the one thing that might get someone's attention. Um, so that's something you might have to practice if you're a multi-hyphenate like I am. So in this section, we'll go over three major steps you can take to build your brand starting today. Defining your brand, building your online presence, and growing your network. Growing your network, I hope you can stick around because that's actually one of the most important parts of this presentation because I'm going to talk a little bit more about online building. Okay. All right. So in this first step, define your brand. I am going to lead you through a couple of exercises that will help you get a better understanding of your professional brand as you create a brand statement. So again, I want for all of you multi-hyphenates out there like me, <laughs> this might be challenging, but just try to focus on one thing. All right. So in the second and third steps, you'll learn about actions you can start taking immediately after the workshop and start building your brand. And for this step, you'll need a pen and paper or you can take notes, of course, in a Google Doc, right? Take notes in a Google Doc. All right, so the first step towards communicating your brand is to figure out your brand statement. Has anyone ever done a brand statement? I'd love to know. Um, yes or no in the chat, say hi, I've done a brand statement. If you wanna put your brand statement in there, I'll see if I have a moment at the end of the class to look at it and give you some feedback or validation, whatever you like. Um, but if you've done something like this, or if you haven't done something like this, if you've done a design sprint, please let me know and everybody else know. And that way I also know that you're awake on a Friday. All right, so your brand statement will be one, one or two sentences, which quickly lets someone get to know you and your work. It tells them your career educational history and lets them know where your career is heading, right? So you're gonna use your brand statement to communicate key information about your potential employers, um, about you to, to potential employers, clients, and other collaborators. You may include it on your resume, in your professional networking emails, or during in-person conversations in a few moments. You'll write out your brand statement and to make it simpler we'll start by focusing on your career story thank you tina i'd love to see it all right a significant part of your brand statement will be telling your career story your career story helps people understand who you are where you're coming from and what you have to offer like all good stories it's important to start at the beginning so have you ever noticed in movies about a superhero like or a super villain have you ever if you've seen guardians of the galaxy recently i'm a huge marvel fan you'll know what a super villain is but the audience always learns the hero's origin story right so they can understand why they behave the way they do you should take these clues remember i said earlier 
when you're consuming, figure out how you can take what you're, what you're consuming to turn it around for you to learn so you can do something similar or different or change it or whatever, however, however you want to communicate, you know, based on what you just consumed. Your career story does serve a similar purpose, right? So your work life experiences have made you the person you are. Maybe they contribute to the way, you know, you approach your career, the way that, you know, you grew up as, as, a, as a kid with, with a mom or a dad who was an entrepreneur, or maybe not. Maybe you're a first generation immigrant and your parents wanted you to be a doctor, but you wanted to be a DJ. I don't know. So you can start your career story by talking about the experience that made you want to go into your career. If your parent had a special, if you're a parent of a special needs child, for example, and you went into teaching, you know, maybe you have a you know, very specific point of view about your work in the classroom, right? Maybe you're a college student, you've been involved in environmental activism, um, you know, bring that perspective if you're maybe applying for a job in city planning. Your career story might also include time away from work. You know, for example, that that's always important. Back in the old days, if you took time off from work, especially if you were a woman having a child, you were severely penalized. Those days are over. You know, I think something's changed since the pandemic. People take breaks and people love it when you take a break. If you tell people, I took time off to do X, Y, Z, you know, always have your story ready for that time off though, right? Lots of people have experienced breaks in employment, right? You know, like I said, raising children, caring for a family member. Maybe you decided to go climb the Kilimanjaro, which is what a friend of mine did. And that was her dream of her lifetime. And she actually made it up to the top and got back down. Um, so don't let an employment break keep you from applying for the jobs you want. And if you've been chronically unemployed, don't let that stop you either, right? A lot of people have been chronically unemployed that have find their way back into the workforce. And there's a lot of opportunity out there these days as well. And there's a lot of ways you can get certifications to learn. So whatever you do, um, be ready to share this information in an interview. Don't sort of be caught off guard. And when I say interview, I also want you to know interview is not just you as a, a, a person seeking a job. This is also you having an interview with someone who you might be asking for funding or who you might be looking to develop a relationship with to, to have a contract or you know you might be looking to join a board or or have someone you know appoint you to, to some position or whatever it is you know just make sure you kind of have the story ready so that uh, people understand what's actually happening so now that we've talked about your past what about the future so sharing your professional goal will help people know where you're headed and it may help them decide if they want to work with you or when they want to work with you right so the parent who's gone into teaching who i mentioned on the earlier slide for example um, with the special needs child, they may have a goal of helping other educators meet all the needs of all their students. So keep in mind that professional goals do change over time. People make decision change, make decision, make changes in their careers often, 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 and that's okay. That's okay. Just write your goals as you understand them today. I will mention, for example, for me, um, you know, my entire presentation online, LinkedIn you know, Google search, uh, you know, Bing search, any of the, any, any of the online searches, um, even if you go into public record documents, you will see that whatever you find out about me is from the perspective of an agency owner, not from the perspective of someone looking for a job. So it's a very different perspective and it really depends on how you've cultivated your brand over time. So I'd like to give you just a few minutes to like combine, combine your career story and your professional goal. Um, and we can come back and write more about it later, even if you don't have a lot of experience in your field yet, for example, if you're on this on this webinar and you're a student or you just graduate from college or you're deciding whether you should go to college or not. You can still talk about what's motivating you to seek a new career and what your ultimate goal is right, but here's a couple of questions, maybe to help you get started. On the story that we're talking about what events led you to become interested in this type of work. Who influenced you along the way? If you could do anything you wanted in your career, what would it be? Anything. If you could do something that you love, 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 and you really didn't care whether you got paid for it or not, that would be something really interesting to know as well. And what's the one important issue you want to solve? What would you like to change in your lifetime? What would you like to see different? Um, what's the first big step you'd like to take towards your dream career? I know for me, um, you know, a, an important issue I'd like to solve is, you know, finding financial independence for women. I just think that's something that I've been working towards my entire career. Everything I work on really is educating and making people aware of, you know, the lack of financial independence and freedom that women have. You know, we are in a permission-based environment, not an environment where we can do what we want. And if you think you are, it's not, because at the end of the day, somewhere along the line, you know, we have to get permission to do the things we're doing. And if we don't get permission, sometimes, you know, we get punished for those things. So I'm trying to always think of ways, like what can I do to help women, you know, realize that they do have power wherever they sit and it starts with that within themselves as long as they can be aware and recognize it so these are the things that i work through 
um, with a lot of the work that I do. Do you have anything like that? Not what I just said, but do you have something that you've always thought about and you've always wanted to fix? Is there any way that that fix can be integrated into the career, your career choice? Okay. All right. So um, thank you for push, putting that out there, Tandra. I might as well just read this out loud. Good morning. I'm Chandra Giles with Rooting on Me, Inc., a nonprofit with the mission to combat, heal, and grow beyond the effects of poverty and violence through healthy self care practices, family support systems, and community involvement. Learn more about us at rootingonme.org. I love that. I think that's fantastic. Um, I like the mission statement. I think it's fantastic. The one thing I probably would add, and this really gets a little bit further beyond a brand statement, this gets more into a brand promise. I would love to know what value someone would get from engaging with Rooting on Me. I'd like to know what will someone get for it? How will they feel? How will they have been transformed or changed? I would love to know that. And maybe you can think about that, not for now, but maybe for later and think about it. It's called a brand promise is what is your organization promise saying to the person that's receiving your services? I love that. I love the heal and grow. That's great. Healthy self-care practices. I think I'd probably um, want to go a little step further, but I think it's great. That's really awesome, Chandra. I love it. I hope everybody follows rootingonme.org and finds out more about the organization because that was very brave of Chandra to put that in the chat. Okay. Thank you so much for that. All right. To complete your brand statement, you're going to need a few more details that describe the way you do things. So your first step will be to make a list of the things you want a potential employer school or coworker to know about you. And these can be qualities you possess, like maybe you're honest or hardworking. Maybe there's specific skills, you know, you're involved in volunteer work, activism, or maybe athletics, you know, maybe entertainment. If you get stuck, think about words that other people use to describe you. Have you ever done that? Have, has anyone ever told you you have a sense of humor, right? Has anyone ever told you, my gosh, you're so great at organization, at organization. you know, uh, do people tell you, I love talking to you because you always help me work through problems and tough issues. Think about things that other people say about you. When you've made your list, circle or highlight the top three qualities, skills, talents that you'd like to share with a potential employer or collaborator. If possible, choose the ones that most influence the way you approach your career. And these quality skills and talents combine with your career story you know, they form the basis of your professional brand. If you, you know, take a few minutes and just list all these things out and circle the top three, you're going to really be on your way to coming up with what your professional or personal brand is. It really does help. I know for me, I consistently hear that I have a lot of energy and I'm very vibrant and I'm extremely creative. I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, I always think about those words whenever I'm, you know, about to pitch or talk to somebody else. And, you know, it's good to know because some people don't have energy. And if you don't have energy, maybe, you know, the fit isn't quite right, right? You know, you have to figure those things out. That actually helps you as well understand the types of clients and customers or relationships you want to have. You want to find some kind of alignment. Okay, so now write your brand statement, keeping it to one or two sentences, include your career goal, your story, your personal qualities and skills that we just discussed. And your brand statement should give people a sense of who you are, where you're coming from, and what special things you have to offer. I'm just going to read a couple of these examples that uh, Google has written out, which I think are interesting. I'm a trained improv comic who uses humor to get young people excited about STEM fields. I'm a journalist who brings attention to important social issues in my community. I'm a former short order cook opening my own food truck to make delicious, healthy food available to people in my communities. So as I mentioned before, aspects of your career story should be integrated into the materials that you use to market yourself professionally, right? So to use some of the examples above, I want to read these things. The improviser who wants to work in STEM should have a brand that combines their great sense of humor with their STEM knowledge. So that sense of fun and humor and knowledge of STEM should be evident in all of their professional materials, right? This means that when they write a cover letter, a professional email, or show up to an interview, their tone, language, the way they present themselves should reflect all of those things, right? You can share your brand statement with, with others and even add it to your resume and profiles in professional networking sites or other social media. I always like to mention, you know, on Twitter or Instagram, make sure that your bio aligns across all the platforms, TikTok, LinkedIn, make sure there's some consistency. Now, knowing, of course, that each platform has their own sort of type of an audience or their own type of vibe, right? So maybe on, you know, TikTok, you wouldn't share the exact same like through line bio line that you would on LinkedIn, but maybe there will be some similar elements to it, depending on how you're using TikTok, right? So think about things like that. 
All right, you can always come back and rework your brand statement. Like I said, it's, it's going to change through your career. And if you're a multi-hyphenate, you probably have more than one brand statement and you'll have to understand who you're talking to um, when you start sharing your story. All right, so this is the first great step you know, to building your brand. It's, it's one of the most important steps, to be honest. If you can't figure this out, um, it's gonna be tough going all the way down the line, right? Um, and if you're, you know, if you're right now a, a staff person or you, work, you have a boss, you, have, you, you work for someone else, you know, and maybe this is the first time you've thought about your brand or your personal brand statement because now you're at a place in your career where you're thinking, mm, I think it's time to make a change or maybe they're going to make a change on me and I haven't done enough to cultivate my professional brand. If you put, if you put, your, if you put my name on the internet, nothing comes up. Or maybe what comes up is old or maybe it's you know a decade old and you're starting to think i really need to get myself out there because i need to make something more of myself online so i have more sustainability and my skills can be transferred to another job right so you know these things happen as well i know in today's environment if i don't see anything current online about the person i'm interested in working with or the customer or the client or the brand whatever it is i'm trying to accomplish if i don't see anything current it's a red flag for me because unlike the old days, the new days, whatever you see online is what's actually happening. If it's not online, then it's probably not happening, which means there's nothing. And there's reasons why people don't put their information online. It really depends on your job, right? There's people that work in cybersecurity. They're very, very careful about putting their information online because they understand the consequences of, of public release of information, okay? All right, so tell me about yourself. Oh, goodness, gosh, don't you have you ever had that question? It is such a challenging question. And I would like to say, I know what to answer when I get the question. But when I get that question, I always think to myself, this person either lacks imagination or they're trying to trap me <laughs> one or the other. So always be prepared for someone that asks this question, right? You might hear it at a networking event, you know, for someone maybe that has anxiety, they don't know what to say. They're like, oh, so what do you do? That's another way of saying, tell me about yourself. What do you do? Tell me about yourself. It's the same question. It can be so large in general, it's hard to answer. But if someone asks you this in an interview and you have your brand statement, you know, along with any of your skills and qualities and interest, you will be okay. You will be okay. So just know that this thing is gonna help you be better. So congratulations, you started building your brand. You know, it can help you speak and write about yourself as a potential employee, right? Um, now think of all the ways you can use this brand statement you're thinking about, or maybe you've already done it now that we've been on this, on this webinar to mark yourself as a potential employee or a collaborator. Think of ways you can incorporate it into all your materials, your packages, your brochures, your website, you know, your, the bottom of your email footer, you know, whatever it is, like wherever you can think of things like this, put it in there. When you're getting ready to be interviewed by some you know, amazing uh, journalist or something, you know, have this story ready, you know, put it in a Google Doc and always have it on your phone, whatever it takes, you always have it by your side and refine it over time. So now we're going to talk about how you can communicate that brand online, right? So I want to talk about the incredibly powerful tool for communicating your brand, which of course is the internet. We've been talking about this the entire time. So, you know, your online presence should always be an extension of the impression you make when you meet someone in person. Right now, this can be challenging and I'll tell you a little bit why. So before the pandemic, Ginger Birkenbuehl had decades of, you know, chemically processed straight hair. During the pandemic, Ginger Birkenbuehl decided not to do chemically processed straight hair anymore. So now Ginger Birkenbuehl post pandemic has natural hair. So when you go online and see me, you're going to see a lot of you're going to see two things. You're going to see, you know, the chemically processed ginger and you're going to see natural hair ginger. And I actually published my first uh, story about it in Fast Company Magazine about my transformation and how it's impacted my professional brand, having natural hair versus straight hair. So the thing I'd like to say is sometimes your online presence is not necessarily your current presence because you've had changes. And if that's happening to you, then you do need to find ways to bridge that gap and to tell a story. Again, continuously telling stories about yourself makes a difference. Okay. So if your brand statement describes you as, for example, a hardworking, determined, and community-minded former line cook who's opening up a food truck, people should get the impression of you when they read your posts on social, when they read you, when you read your posts on any type of media platform or when you're having an in-person interview or you're showing up on a podcast, maybe like mine, the Honest Bill Guy podcast, right? So I want to talk a little bit about how to promote your brand online. And I hope you're already doing this. I hope you're already using social media. Can someone please put in the chat someone that's 
feeling really good about their social media presence and how they're commuting their professional brand on social, put your Instagram or TikTok or Twitter or LinkedIn handle in the chat so that I can copy and take a look at it later and I'll connect with you. All right, so most of us appreciate and participate in some form of social media, right? No matter what platforms you use, you know, online will affect how people view you. We already talked about this extensively, 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 but I do wanna mention when you're online, um, try really hard to be professional, but definitely try to be positive, be as positive as you can, because there's enough places to get negative content. There are so many places now you can get negative content, starting with the news. Um, so what do you need to do that for? Why do you need to share negative content? In fact, why do you need to reshare negative content unless you have something to say about that negative content that actually adds value to the reader, right? If you're gonna share content, at least add value. Don't just Don't just share it because it's there and you feel like you're supposed to share it because then you become programmed and then you're just sort of, you know, you're just a consumer, you're not actually adding value. If you're gonna share content, share it with purpose and intention, always. If it's your own content, that's different. But if you're sharing someone else's, share it with intention and try to be positive with it, right? And I know it's hard. Sometimes I got trouble. Sometimes I'm like, I wanna go down that dark space, but I realize of course when I'm online that I am trying to cultivate my professional brand on an ongoing basis and I'm trying to develop new relationships and build my network. So I try to stay positive. Okay. So whether you post whatever you post, it's open to the general public. Even if you have it on private, just keep that in mind. No matter what, it's a reflection of your personal and professional brand. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay. So building a following for your business or professional work on social media can be overwhelming. Um, but you don't have to be ever everywhere all at once. Some people are like, I can't be on 10 channels. And that's totally fine. If you want to start with a platform, pick one, try to contribute to that platform on a regular basis. And then that will help train you to be more consistent on other platforms, right? I am an expert at multi-channel communication experiences. This is what I do for a living. I have no intimidation around using multiple platforms at the same time. I can jump into a platform and I know exactly what platform I'm on and I know the tone to use on that specific platform. This takes time and this takes practice. Okay, in order to choose the right platform though, you have to think of two things. What is the brand you're trying to cultivate and what is the audience you're trying to reach? That hopefully will help you figure out which platform you should be choosing. So photo and video sharing sites like Instagram and TikTok allow you to post and share photos and videos with friends or general public. You know, these can be great for your professional brand, especially if you work in a field where your work can be presented visually. However, don't let that stop you. If you work in a field that's not visual, you still can use these platforms, right? Like I'm looking at TikTok and all the doctors are putting all kinds of great content. They didn't used to have visual brands or visual industry. This was not a visual industry before and now it is. You can go to TikTok and learn all kinds of things about the medical field, right? Um, hairstylists, painters, performers, artists, designers, of course, these two platforms are fantastic for that. That is obvious, but don't expect that just because you're not a visual artist that you're not a creator, because you are. If you have a thought in your head, you are a creator. If you think anything, you're a creator. I mean, I know you probably grew up with a narrative that said, I am not a creator. You know, I'm an accountant or I'm a medical professional or I'm a police officer. That does not mean you're not creative. You know, that's a narrative that needs to be unpacked right now and stop yourself from saying that because you are. All right, microblogging sites, Twitter, allow you to share your thoughts in just a sentence or two. These sites can be great for writers and other content creators. Does anyone on this webinar have a strong Twitter profile that they can share because you share amazing content on Twitter? Show everyone how it's done because Twitter is a very special place. It's a little bit of a challenging place right now. And we all know why, but it's still a really interesting platform. I'd love if anyone has a great Twitter handle that they use for their own content, please share it. All right, social networking sites allow you to stay in touch with people you know, right? Um, you can have a profile as a business or you can have a profile as, a, as yourself. Um, I actually have a profile on Instagram, Burke Creative. You can find me there. It's Instagram.com slash Burke Creative. And that is my business page, but it's also my professional page as well. So I marry both of my brands on that platform. I do have private brands and I do have a private channel. And I have another channel that I use to express my fashion sense, which is Ask Ginja, which is on Instagram, instagram.com slash Ask Ginja. But Burt Creative is actually my professional and uh, personal brand married together, but mostly business. 
Sometimes if you have two things, you want to think about how to actually separate these things. Making and sharing content can be a great way to help people learn about what you do. So people in almost any career can use content to build their brand. A teacher can write a blog post about interesting assignments. There's lots of examples on TikTok to show you how teachers are talking about what they're doing with students, right, with, in the terms of their educational experiences. An HR professional can share articles about employment law. Again, does that sound like a creator? It is. These people, this is creation. This is how you create really cool things, right? Um, maybe a hairstylist posts before and after photos. I love before and after photos when I look at houses. That's like always fun. Does anybody else have fun looking at before and after rooms or kitchens or bathrooms? That's totally cool. And a real estate agent always can post tips on how to sell more effectively. Think about this. When you're posting, again, you want to sort of come up with ways to add value, not just be broadcast. A lot of people go on social media and they're just broadcasting all day. This is what I did today. This is how I did it. Not the how, but this is what I did. This is what I'm eating. This is this. Um, look at this thing. And that's fine, depending on your career or whatever you're trying to cultivate. But a lot of times people are using social media because they want to learn something. They want to know how to do something, you know, you know, they or even, you know, sometimes people go on social just to sort of feel good or to say, oh, I love the way those clothes look. I want to try those myself or this is really entertaining. This is making me laugh today. I mean, you know, as long as you're intentional about what you're doing, when I go on social, for example, I'm like, OK, I'm going on TikTok for the next hour because I want to laugh and I want to learn. But I also want to see some other things because. I'm creating something for another client. And I want to see how someone else is doing something. So I go on these platforms with intention. Remember, you also don't have to create your own original content. You can always share other people's content. But again, like I said earlier, if you're going to share other people's content, add value, share a message. Don't just be like, don't just be robotic and share and share and share. You know, do something else along with your share. You know, add a creative element even. If you can't come up with a message, at least add you know, some kind of an animation to the thing that you're resharing on these social channels, right? And always remember to give creators credit for their work. I cannot tell you how many times someone has appropriated content and acted like it was their own. Do your best. If someone inspired you, please say, this was inspired by a post from blah, 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 or shared via at Bird Creative. I mean, somehow give other people credit because karma is good, you know, when you're greedy, you will get punished for greed. And greed oftentimes is how we act on social, by not giving credit to other people that helped you create the content. Okay, that's another definition, in my humble opinion, called greed. Okay, so make the most of your content by cross-promoting it, right? That's all you have to do. You know, if you write an article online, example, for example, post a link to it on your social media account as well. If you have a story you've written, a short story that's gotten published, always make sure you post that as well. So once you've started building your presence online, it also becomes important to consider what parts of life you don't want to share. And again, it's getting harder and harder and harder for privacy online. There really isn't privacy. So just know that whatever you post is not private. People can screenshot it. They can record you when you're not knowing it. Their phones are always on the desk. Your phone is recording your voice. It's, make, it's tracking your eye movements. Everything is happening. There is no privacy. You need to understand that if you want absolute privacy, the only thing you actually can do is take your phone, put it away in a box, put it deep in your purse, turn it off, or your backpack, or your bag, or, or something, turn it off, and if you really want to go offline, you got to take the battery out of your phone. That's the truth, okay? That's coming from Ginger Birkenbuehl. <laughs> that is my own personal message. That is not a message coming from Google. I'm just telling you that that's what it is, because you need to understand that there is no more privacy. So we are going to talk about a few ways you can protect your brand and yourself by taking steps to ensure some of your privacy. And by the way, I really do want to add, um, Google has a new uh, workshop called uh, cybersecurity. Highly recommend uh, taking a look at that. Um, I actually hope to be running that class with BACP in the next couple of months. It's a fantastic class and it's about cybersecurity and how to protect yourself from scams and other things online, because it's getting a lot harder to do that. It's getting a lot harder to know what's fake and, and what's real. So that's a class coming up. If you wanna type in cybersecurity Google digital coaches, you'll find out. Um, and by the way, before I go into the privacy piece, um, Google digital coaches, I put the announcement earlier in the chat. They just had an announcement yesterday. They've expanded the Google digital coaches program. I highly recommend you connect with one of those coaches across the country 
If you look at the link above and scroll on the chat, you'll see the link to the press release. And there's coaches in small rural towns in America now, which I think is really exciting. Um, I'm actually a Google partner. So I highly encourage you to go and engage with the Google Digital Coaches across the country because they're doing amazing, amazing work. And they are responsible in part for releasing this new cybersecurity um, deck because we really do need cybersecurity as entrepreneurs. Okay, so privacy again. Um, when you apply for a new job, the chances are very high that a potential employer is gonna search the internet for your name, right? At some point during the hiring process. Now, hopefully this employer has uh, a privacy policy and a social media governance policy in place because there are there are rules around you know companies and people that work at companies searching social media handles and things like that but it is done right so a lot of times they look because they want to know if you're a good fit for the company so you want to make sure that you're thinking about these things when you're online because you want to do things that are not embarrassing or cause problems for yourself or for your potential employer or collaborator or people on your board or your family, your children, whatever it is. My mom used to say to me all the time, it wasn't, wasn't my mom that said to me, maybe it was my dad, it was probably my dad, you know, um, don't ever bring shame to the family name. This is what this is about. Do not bring shame to the company you work for. <laughs> Always keep that in mind. All right, so if you wanna try this on your phone or your laptop, there's something called incognito or private browsing. Okay, so this is what you wanna do on your phone. Um, I have a Google Pixel, you can do private browsing all the time. But if, if, you, if you would go through this exercise, I think it'll be very helpful for you if you're trying to understand what I'm talking about right now. So start in incognito or private browsing mode. And if somebody on the chat can help other people understand how to do that, let me, let me actually restart that. If you don't know how to get to private browsing or incognito, please say on the chat, how do I do this? And maybe someone on the chat can help this person understand how to get to incognito or private browsing, because this is a really important thing to know, a feature that you need to know exists on all browsers and all, all phones um, that access the internet. Okay, so incognito mode allows you to search the web without your prior search and browser history affecting your results. So in other words, incognito makes your search results more likely to look like the results of someone else who's searching for you online. That's why it's important to use this, okay? So here's how I do it in Google Chrome. At the top of the browser, you wanna click File, the new incognito window. After your incognito window opens, navigate to a search engine to perform your search. And typically with private browsing mode, it's, I think it's, it might be dark gray or it might be black. You can always tell it's private. It doesn't look the same as a regular non-private incognito browsing mode. Um, this exercise is optional, and I want you to perform an internet search of yourself. Make sure you're in a safe place when you do it. If you're in public right now listening to this, if you're in a Starbucks or something, or anywhere, McDonald's, you know, you probably don't want to do a search for yourself in a public place because you just don't know what's going to come up. You just don't know unless you're like me, where you've been very careful to cultivate your brand for decades. Um, you kind of know what's already there, right? So just make sure you are prepared for what you find out if you haven't been doing work on this and don't be alarmed and don't be afraid. It's actually kind of exciting to find out because you're here to learn, right? You're here because you wanna know how to do better with your brand. So before you begin your search, make sure you have privacy. Okay, this exercise is designed to help you find out what potential employers, collaborators, or educators will see when they search for you. Um, it'll give you a chance to evaluate whether your results are in line with the brand that you are building for yourself or your company, okay? No matter what you find, um, doing this search will help you be prepared for when a potential employer finds something about you that you were like thinking you could hire, or didn't have to tell, right? And this is something to consider. Um, you might find results for other people with your same name. You might find out somebody has your brand that you're there, you have the same company name that happened to me. There's a company in Germany, Burke, they took, they have Burke something. And I was like, oh man, wow, really? It's fine. I mean, you know, when I'm working with people to develop, you know, brand names, I always do a search first online. And I give them a cautionary tale. Look, there are 10 other companies that sound just like this. Are you sure you want this name? You know, like if there's anything in life that requires originality, it's a name, like come up with something that no one else has. And that's even naming your children. <laughs> All right, so you might find, again, results um, 
that you know there might be a news article where you're featured and you didn't even know about and that's something that's sometimes a pleasant surprise and you might not find anything and that's fine too kind of um you might find something positive like a good review of your business maybe something you volunteered on i know one time which i found really interesting i searched for someone and a pdf came up of a of an of a um a nonprofit um donor list report and their name was in it and it actually listed how much money they gave and i my first thought was man they gave a lot of money <laughs> number two i thought did the company that published the report of all their donor lists did they get permission from their donors to publish their names i mean i don't know i thought about this right because this is what happens these pdfs go out there and the internet can scour the pdfs and pull all the information in the pdf and put it online that actually happens um, you might find results that are embarrassing. Again, like I said, maybe that person didn't want people to know they gave $100,000 to this nonprofit organization, right? Um, maybe they don't feel on brand. If this happens, you want to ask yourself, do I have control over this? Do I have control? If your search results bring up something you'd rather not people see, see if you can delete it. See if you can delete it. Um, if it's a social media account, sign into that account and change its settings to private. If you find the information on social media, change it to private. If the content's included on someone else's website or social media play, page, you can ask them to remove it. If your search brings up something you don't have any control of, like a negative review of your business, that's good information to have. I mean, you can be prepared to address it if necessary. I, I always like to say, you know, um, I don't fail, I learn. You know, Mel, Nelson Mandela said that, I, I never lose, I never fail, I just learn. And when you're a business, if you have a bad review, it's good information to have because you'll need to address it. You'll want to address it. And this is part of having a business. Everyone's not going to like you. Everyone's not going to like what you do. There are going to be unhappy customers and hopefully they're not toxic or intentionally damaging customers. Hopefully they really do have a beef. And if they have a real authentic beef, it's helpful to know about it because you can address it and you can maybe rebuild the relationship with that, with that customer. So if you want to post things on social media that may not align with your professional brand, you want to set your personal social media accounts to private. Again, they're not totally private. Just keep in mind, people take screenshots. People remember what you said and what you did and how you made them feel, that whole thing. So it's not ever private. Don't believe it. It's never private. But you can still take some steps. Um, we talked a lot about how to use your social media to build your professional brand, but there's no reason that you can't also have accounts where you can be casual. Like I have an account that is only for family and friends and, and parents and moms and dads of of uh, kids of, of uh, families that my kids went to school with and it's like really tiny i've only got like 40 people on it and there's i'm following more people than i'm letting into my account and i get requests all the time to follow and i'm like no i'm not you can't come here this is only for my family and my kids that's why i have other accounts i've got Burt creative i've got the honest field guide i have i have asked ginger I have Journey of Gratitude. I have other places if you wanna know about what I'm doing, you always can have a private account. It's fun to have that, right? Um, just remember when potential employers or colleagues search for you, they will see that all of your accounts are not set to private. So again, if you wanna share photos of family and funny cat memes or whatever, just go into the privacy settings of all the accounts and see what you wanna share. Um, your personal accounts may not present a problem. Sometimes they do. You know, if your career is in a field like social media or marketing like me, having a big social media presence works to my advantage. I mean, this is a good thing for me because people I get hired. My company gets hired all the time to manage multiple channels on social media. That's that's what one of the one of the big verticals of my company. I launch I launch social media platforms for big brands, for politicians, for industries, for nonprofit organizations, whatever it is. This is what this is part of what I do in my vertical. But if you're putting out information or opinions that are too personal in nature that other people might find controversial, if it doesn't align with the brand you're trying to cultivate, you might not get hired. It might put your current job in jeopardy. Someone else might be triggered and say, look at what you're, they might, they might be upset by something you said. They take a screenshot. Next thing you know, they've notified your employer. This person put this thing out. I feel attacked. That employer comes to you and said, hey, listen, this is not appropriate, take it down, or worse, you're fired. I mean, all kinds of things can happen. So you gotta be really intentional about your content on social, right? So locking down your accounts allows you to approve any potential followers as well. My LinkedIn, I don't let any of my contacts on LinkedIn become visible to people that come to my channel. So if you go to my LinkedIn, you will not see any of the contacts I have in my LinkedIn because I respect their privacy. They haven't given me permission to release their information to people that want to be connected with me on LinkedIn. So nobody can see my connections but me. That's my choice. Other people, salespeople, 
salespeople, they want to put all their connections out there. They want to show people who they're connected to. So there's a couple other ways you can manage your privacy online. Um, a Google privacy checkup allows you to look through these settings in your Google account. I'm going to put, oops, I didn't mean to open that. <laughs> Hold on one second. I wanted to copy this little thing right here. Let me copy this for you. Okay, so I want to put this in the chat. This actually, okay. This actually, uh, myaccount.google.com slash privacy checkup. Um, this is going to suggest some different privacy settings for you to look at. And, uh, you know, this will give you some recommendations, for example, on Google. Now, Google is the largest search engine in the world, it is the most popular search engine in the world. It is the one that most people and businesses use. Um, you know, that's the truth. So going into the privacy checkup for Google is your first step to understanding how to negotiate and protect your privacy, not just on Google, but it actually gives you skills and training to how to do this everywhere. You know, once you do it here on Google, which in my opinion is a foundational sort of learning platform, you can then take that learning to Twitter, Bing, DuckDuckGo, any of these other resources where you, you look and research for information so you can do your, a job better. You can use these skills for other platforms. So this screen shows the top part of the privacy checkup. Um, you can scroll down to browse to browse the key privacy settings. You can decide which ones you want to review, and you should review all of them if you can. I know I do on a regular basis. But a few privacy settings you might want to look at. Um, start with the manage what you share on YouTube tab. So that actually um, can let you know if you want people to see what you've been watching, the playlists you have, you know, subscriptions you own, like all this stuff is public unless you say no. So if you've been posting YouTube content that fits your professional brand and you, and you, you know, you want to see that content, make sure you check the box, right? Then you want to look at your YouTube activity feed and you can choose automatically to have your public YouTube activity show up in your channel's activity feed, or you can keep the information private. Um, take a look at your Google photo settings. Choose whether you want to have geolocation from your photos removed or not. Geolocation is when you took a picture, I took a picture of this year's tower downtown Chicago on what is it Franklin Street, you know that will show up in your Google photos unless you remove that. Um, so take a look at things like that you do have control over these things now again. Everything's not private you have settings on your phone, you have to think about right, so if you have location services on your phone or you're allowing location tracking. Um, some of this has to change on your phone as well right it's, it's just really you have a lot we're in a device heavy world. And you need to know how to control some of these issues that you're dealing with okay finally you can control what others see about you. So you can make sure that you haven't been sharing private information like your home address phone number or whatever via your Google profile and you're thinking to yourself wow this is insane. How do how does how do we get here I don't I really you know there's a lot of ways that we got here and there's a lot of articles you can read online from a lot of economists. And there's even articles you should be reading online from everyday people, not the celebrities, not the people that work for big brands like me, but read some other things, trusted, not scandalous, but read other things about how we've gotten here from you know, non-celebrity people. And you'll learn a lot about not only how we got here, but how you can protect your own personal brand and how you can make yourself more private. Um, you just have to get out there and read some things, right? Um, I'm trying to think there's one other thing I wanted to mention about the privacy issue and I'll have to come back to it later. It's a personal anecdote that I have around it, but I forgot what I was thinking. So I have to come back to it later. But now that you've learned several steps you can take to grow your brand online, identifying the right platforms, keeping tabs on your search results, managing your privacy settings, things like that, and performing a privacy checkup, you now know that these things all add up to how to cultivate your professional or personal brand online. Your privacy settings have everything to do with what people think and know about you because it's online. So this is part of the process. It's not just writing the statement, you're done. Like, oh yeah, I got my brand statement. I know who I am. I know what to do now. I got all my information in the right places. It's also how to make certain information not show up at all. <laughs> okay, so you gotta keep this in mind. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. Steady progress, steady progress wins the race. As aerial investments would say, John Rogers, slow and steady wins the race. Consistent monitoring your brand will help you grow it to potential employers, collaborators, and clients. And people will understand what you do and what you have to offer. And they think positive thoughts about you, not, not horrible thoughts, positive thoughts, right? 
So you've defined your brand, you've learned how to spread the word online. Your next step is to get as many people as possible familiar with and excited about your brand, okay? This is referred, referred to as growing a network. I mentioned earlier, hopefully you're still here, you can stick around because growing the network is probably the most difficult thing that's happening right now because we've been in a pandemic and people have not fully returned to work and some people are never going back to the office. So it's, it's how, how do you do this? How do you build a network if you're not in the office anymore? Um, so the people you surround yourself with in person and online are the people that can help you grow your career. So you want to ask yourself a few questions. Okay, who should I meet in order to continue growing my brand and career? Who do I need to know? What kinds of people should know about me and my work and the work I'm doing? What kinds of people? What kinds of organizations, right? So the more people you know, the more chances, of course, you'll have to find new opportunities. But if you don't know people, it takes time. I get this question a lot now. How do I meet people? What do I do? I get this question a lot from women, younger women. How do I meet people? There's a lot of ways to do it. We'll talk a little bit about it here. And if you want to have a deeper dive into this conversation with me personally, please sign up for my newsletter that I put in the chat earlier and we can connect there. And I also, by the way, am going to get the email addresses from BACP because I do have a PDF fact sheet based on this presentation that I will be sharing out after the workshop. So um, hopefully, You've signed up through their process to come here and I'll have your email address and I'll forward the PDF via email um, at some point today. If not today, it'll be Monday. So I don't want to overpromise. Okay. So once you identify the kinds of people you want to meet, you can take steps to start meeting more of them. This is often called networking. I have been called by many people a professional networker. I love networking, but to me, it's not networking. It's just, I'm curious. I want to know what people are doing. I'm curious. And you know, it's not a nosy Nelly. It's really like, what exactly are you working on? How cool is it? How not cool is it? How can I help you? How can I make it better? What is what do you need me to do to help you do this thing? So that to me is my curiosity, which is how I refer to networking. I'm curious. So, but it does mean forming a community of people with a shared intention of building each other's careers. You can meet people by attending events related to your career interests, right? Or you can maybe you're in school, joining groups on campus, things like that. You can get involved with professional organizations, taking an internship, attending a conference showing up at this webinar i am noticing and i'm just going to just shout it out there's only a few people that have actually engaged on this chat part of the networking in today's environment and the future environment is engaging on chats sharing what you know with others putting your name out there giving people a link to your linkedin profile or your instagram or your TikTok profile this is part of networking if you haven't put your name in this webinar chat you're not networking and that's fine. Maybe you're here just to listen and learn. That's totally fine. But if you're trying to build something, get people to know you, you need to be putting your information in this chat and saying, hello, I am so-and-so. I do this. Connect with me on LinkedIn, whatever, <laughs> you know, make it happen. All right. Okay. I'm not shaming anybody. Just, you know, this is not shame. <laughs> All right. So you can grow your network virtually by participating in career related conversations online. So Let's start with professional networking sites. My favorite is LinkedIn. Favorite, favorite, favorite. LinkedIn at the moment still is free, free, free. And there are not a whole lot of ads running on LinkedIn. Like you won't go to LinkedIn and get served 10,000 ads for Nike shoes. No, no, no. But you will get 10,000 articles from people that work at Nike talking about their industry, which are people you can connect with. That's the kind of connection and networking that I like to do, okay? Because then I'm learning and I'm meeting people that I'm interested in meeting in the industries that I want to be working with and for. So you gotta also remember the channels you're on. Um, professional networking sites allow you to interact with other users as well as companies that are looking to hire, okay? Looking to hire. You can build a profile in a professional networking site by showcasing your accomplishments, sharing your volunteer work. Please do at least one thing, volunteer and post about your industry. And then you can engage in discussions with other people. For example, I am constantly writing about artificial intelligence um, on LinkedIn. I'm commenting on it. I'm sharing other people's information around artificial intelligence, specifically Google Bard or ChatGPT. I'm always experimenting with these two things because I'm a content creator. Go there to learn. Another option is finding a mentor. So mentors play a special role in your career development I get this question all the time. How do I find a mentor? Well, let's talk a little about it. A mentor is someone that has more experience than you and is willing to share their knowledge to help you grow. You can meet mentors generally in educational settings or even in classes you take outside of work. You might also meet them through friends. 
Whether you meet them in, online or in person, you can ask people in your field for an informational interview or a chat. So you have the opportunity to ask questions about their field or career. And you can find a mentor at your current job. Keep in mind, you can be mentored to death. So it depends on where you are in your career. Women, I'm here to tell you, women are mentored to death. It's time for you to get sponsors, to move into the place of a woman taking your hand, actually mostly a man, most likely a man taking your hand and saying, let me put you in this table. You belong here, here's the job. Like you just don't need mentoring anymore. So it really depends on where you are in your career. If you're younger and you're just coming into the field or maybe you're sort of in your, you know, in your 20s or 30s, you know, you might still need mentorship and that's totally fine. But at some point you have to switch to something else like an advocate, like a mentor is likely to become someone further along in their career path than you. Unlike a mentor who there is pretty much there to impart knowledge, an advocate helps you take concrete actions to help your career progress. They may be able to recommend you for a job or a promotion, right? That's what that's what an advocate can be. Mentors and advocates both serve very important roles. I've had them, I've had these two. The big difference between a mentor and an advocate is that mentors help you grow by imparting knowledge while advocates act on your behalf. So you wanna think about whether you have mentors or advocates in your career now. If you have too many mentors, you've had too many mentors for too long, you've been in the mentor space for too long, get out of it, start looking for advocates and don't waste time with this, you've gotta hurry. you know. And people that, that are in business, they understand this. Don't be afraid to ask, they know what's happening because they had the same thing. Unless they're in a family legacy that's had multiple generations of wealth, you know, and there's a bunch of companies in Chicago that will go nameless that have this. If you haven't had that experience, people that you're asking or talking to or wanting to have relationships like this, they get it. They've had to do it too. All right. Companies have advisory groups called board of directors. So a board of directors is a group of industry experts that guides important decisions and steers a company through difficult times as well as good ones. Hopefully you have a good board of directors or some companies that have terrible ones. But as you build your career and personal brand, you may also benefit from creating your own board of directors. Have you ever thought about that? You can do this. Remember I said earlier about when you're, when you're consuming, make sure you consume for knowledge and you consume to make it work for you. So when you look at companies that have board of directors, there's no reason why you can't have one as well. So this is a group of people who can steer your decision making process and introduce you to people, give you great advice or just help you talk through things through. This is not the same as a mastermind. A mastermind is not a board of directors. That's a different thing. I'm not talking about mastermind. So rather than a company's board of directors, which has a formal meeting, your board can be a group of mentors, friends, colleagues with expertise in your field or similar fields who have opinions that you trust. Sometimes your board of directors isn't even official. There's just people in your network that you always call on and they kind of know when you call that you've got a question or you need help. I have a board of directors, you know, rather than meeting in a group, you know, you can call them out individually when you need help, like I just mentioned. So unlike your mentors and advocates, your board of directors does not have to consist solely of people with more experience than you. That's the other thing, right? It can include peers that you trust. It can include lots of older people in the business. It can include very much younger people in the business because you need understanding about certain concepts and ideas, you know, try to curate a diverse group of people with diverse perspectives because they're going to help you make decisions and take steps that you wouldn't otherwise take. Don't jump into groupthink. Don't join in with people that look like you or talk like you or come from the same neighborhood. You have to break out of that. You have to look up, look out the window, walk down the street, Go to the lake, go to the south side, go to the west side, go to the north side, whatever it takes, go somewhere and go out. And this is just, of course, figuratively speaking, but my point is, is that you want diverse perspectives and you have to break out of silos because you cannot grow. You will not grow if you're in a silo of groupthink. It will not work. So you might even find friends from school or professors. There's just so many ways to build your board of directors. All right. So. If you have questions, please put in the chat. I'd love to help answer. I do have a few more minutes of this and I wanna make sure that I look at Q&A. Maybe, Geraldine, if there's Q&A or if there's chat that you can curate for me and come off mic in a few minutes, I'd love to hear if there's something, if there's a common theme that's going on here. Um, so, you know, today you took the first steps towards building your professional brand and your personal brand. We discussed how companies can use branding to build their reputations, right? And learned how individuals can build their own professional brand to take their careers to the next level. You defined your brand statement and you figured out how to respond when someone says, tell me about yourself. 
what do you do? <laughs> what do you do, right? I mean, in an interview meeting or a network setting. And then we talked about ways you can build your brand online presence, right? You talked about strategies for expanding your reach through content creation, a little bit of that. Um, we looked at strategies for expanding your network. We discussed finding mentors and advocates. And then we talked about board of directors, which maybe, maybe many of you haven't thought about that before. I, I ran a class at the School of the Art Institute um, in front of uh, some seniors, not, I'm sorry, not seniors, they were actually going for their master's degrees and they never ever had considered a board of directors. One, one person in the class actually said, you know what, I actually do have a board of directors, but it never occurred to me that that's what it is. And I'm like, yeah, board of directors, if you're you know, in college right now, having a board of directors will help you get through, right? There's, and there's organizations also that help, that help mentor and, and pipeline as well. You don't have to just think about your personal board of directors. So this is an important step in building your brand, but also it helps you share what you know with others in your network beyond you know, internet experiences and, and, and help cultivate whisper campaigns about yourself. Because whisper campaigns is where the money comes in and where the opportunity lies. A lot of times it's when people say things when you're not in the room, that's where the opportunity lies. And that's how I've gotten some of my best opportunities. Um, okay, so this workshop honestly is just the beginning. Um, now that you've started thinking about your brand, there's a couple steps you can take now. Incorporate your brand into your, your professional portfolio. You know, your marketing materials, your, your resume and social media profiles. Um, if your resume has a summary statement, make sure it reflects the things we talked about that you're learning to do today. Experiment with design elements, um, wording choices, you know, colors, uh, textures. How do you present yourself online? What kind of clothes do you wear consistently, depending on the channel you're on, right? Is yellow your favorite color? Right now, yellow is my favorite color. You'll see, in fact, if you go, well, I actually just switched it out last night, but before yesterday, my LinkedIn photo, I had this shirt with my with my hair, with my, this, is this shirt, this, this sweater with my hair out, and this is what I was wearing. And this actually, and these earrings, I just recently did a post of these earrings. So what you know, when I when I put myself online like this, I always think before I come on, what am I trying to present today? What am I trying to look like right right now? Even though yellow is one of my favorite colors, I'm also representing um, you know Google as my client right now, right? So this is kind of what this looks like. So think about things like that. Build your brand online. Search for yourself. If you find anything that feels off brand, try to figure out how to fix it. Right? You don't want a potential employer or colleague, your potential board of directors, your friends, your family. Whatever's happening, you know, your children who are going for a job and they do a search of your last name and they find you and they're like, oh my God, this kid's parents are like, la, 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 la. Like, you know, you want to present yourself well because your presentation extends way beyond you. It goes to your network, your family and everything beyond. That's literally what we're talking about right now. Pick one or two social media platforms, begin posting, sharing on that channel on a regular basis and be on brand on that one channel, at least one channel where you're on brand all the time. And then third, build your network, find mentors and advocates, find people that can appoint you to a board. Right now, I'm in a position where I'm asking my network, I am looking for a board to serve on, a non-quota board, a non-fundraising board, because after all, I am a black woman with three children trying to get to college. I can't set out you know, 10, 15, $25,000 a year, and I can't ask people I know for that kind of money right now, because I'm raising money for myself so I can get my kids to college. So you know, make sure that when you're looking for boards, um, you know, that you have, that you know what you're looking for, for example, but one of the reasons to have a professional and personal brand is that if you're, whatever chapter you're in, you're lined up to get the results you're looking for, right? And that requires having a really amazing type of a brand online, right? And your network will grow and it will change. I just put a post on LinkedIn today. LinkedIn is a great platform to connect with not only future, but the past, a woman from the past who I used to work with when I first started my business when I was doing government work. She showed up in my feed and I thought, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in 10 years. And we actually reconnected and had lunch at a restaurant downtown. And I was so grateful to see her again. And it was wonderful um, connecting to say, oh my gosh, we've done so much amazing work together over the years. What in the heck? I and mean, we all, we have children now, they're going to college and it was just really wonderful. And she was able to you know, reconnect. And it was really because of both of us have a very strong online presence. And this does work for you on a long-term basis. So I wanna know what your action plan is. So I want you to take a moment and think about all the things we talked about today, write down one thing you're gonna do next. Like, what is the start of your action plan? I would love to know. Type it in the chat box. Let me know what's going on. What's the next thing? And if you enjoyed these lessons, um, I encourage you to subscribe to the Grow With Google YouTube channel. 
Um, and you can do this at youtube.com slash grow, I'm sorry, youtube.com slash Google Career Certificates as well. Let me copy this for you and put this in the chat. Um, and if you don't know about career certificates, please do learn about the career certificates. I have several certificates um, issued by Google from classes that I learned, and now I have certifications which go beyond my college degree. Um, but anyway, this channel publishes uh, videos regularly. They cover topics that can help you grow your skills and careers. Um, you know, again, like I feel like similar to being mentored to death, you can be educated to death. At some point you have to act, right? I mean, learn as much as you can, but then move on and start actually putting what you learn into practice. You've got to start putting it into practice. Um, I don't know what that looks like for you, but you've got to, you know, this is what has to be done. You have to execute. So if you're looking to start a new career, you know, Google career certificates actually are a great, great place to start. If you get a career certificate, you have training that'll help you get a job in other places or help you be better positioned for a job. I mean, we know right now the environment's challenging. There's a lot of significant layoffs happening. Um, however, if you are upskilled with technology, you are better situated to get a job, even in this very difficult job market. Okay. Um, I know city of Chicago, for example, has a ton of uh, openings for jobs available and every job that they have, they need someone with technical experience and skills. Um, but Google career certificates can give you a path to in-demand jobs, right? Um, with top employers that are currently hiring, um, all kinds of things. So take a look at that and see what you think. Um, and again, I will be hopefully running the cybersecurity workshop with city of Chicago at some point soon. Um, and then last but not least, I encourage you to join Grow with Google. Um, just go to this site and you can find all kinds of amazing things. You can see all the partners that are connected with Grow with Google. And like I mentioned, um, uh, Google um, Digital Coaches, they are now expanding across the country to small rural communities in the United States. So you'll find a, a new coach was just onboarded to uh, work in a small town in Michigan. Um, I think we have um, another coach um, in some, uh, I'm not sure if it's Utah, but there's another, you know, small, another, another big state with small towns. So really get involved with the Google Digital Coaches. They are an amazing platform with amazing people, amazing coaches um, that do amazing work in the cities um, and states across the United States. So I highly encourage that. And I want to thank you very, very much for coming to today's workshop, building your professional brand. I, you know, we, Google would really value your feedback. So if you can take a moment to share your thoughts, we'd appreciate it. Um, you can access the survey at g.co slash grow slash feedback, or you can just take a shot of this uh, QR code and leave your thoughts and comments. It would really be appreciated, not only from me, but also from Google. And thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate being here. I'm delighted that everybody showed up on a Friday morning to listen to this workshop. Great, thanks, Ginger. Do you have time for one or two questions? I see this just came in. Yes, I do. Perfect. Um, what AI tools would you recommend to those that are at the beginning process of building a professional brand? Oh my gosh, I, I love that question so much. And there are so many AI tools out there, but I mean, I would obviously say BARD, B-A-R-D. Um, that really is the tool I would be experimenting with right now if I was if I were looking for a tool to help me build content, images, articles, newsletters, email, you can even refine a brand positioning statement, you know, there's just so many things you can do if you're working on your professional uh, brand right now that we just talked about, you can take that content and put it into Bard and ask Bard what Bard thinks. Bard is not a person, Bard is artificial intelligence, it's a machine. Um, but, you know, put it in there and see what happens. It's a great tool to help you, like I said, refine content. So that's really the number one tool I would recommend um, for that. If you are seeking image work, um, you know, Google right now doesn't have a public image platform yet. They haven't released what's called their Imogen platform, which is really amazing. Um, you can find out about Imogen, but it's not available to the public yet. In the meantime, if you really need some help with artificial intelligence, generative AI images, visuals, you can try mid journey. Um, and that's MID journey as in my journey of gratitude, you can try that and you can experiment with images just be careful because it is experimental. And you don't really know where the images are coming from that create these images artificial intelligence is formulating them itself. And so um, some of these some of this work is not is, is copyrighted. So you can't really use it for 
public advertising campaigns, things like that, because you don't know where it comes from, but you can use it for yourself. Um, and the other piece is some of these platforms I have to mention are biased because they're pulling in um, data that is systemically biased. So some of the images that you might pull may not be appropriate or they may, may be uh, disturbing. And some of the content that you get, um, depending on the questions you ask, may be biased content as well. Because again, the artificial tools are pulling information from existing information online and a lot of existing information is biased. So you just have to be very intentional about how you're using those artificial intelligence systems just like you're being intentional about using social media, which is also running on artificial intelligence and automation as well. Just like your email, which is running on automation, just like your advertising, your digital advertising is all automation powered by artificial intelligence. So you just have to be very intentional. Thank you so much for the question. And if you connect with me on my newsletter, um, I am gonna be sharing more information about AI tools, which I have been for the last two months. So that's really a great place for me to share non-Google AI tools more extensively. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just getting lots of thank you, thank yous. This is great. This is great. Um, so inspired, Sifo. Great information. And yes, this video will be posted on BACP's YouTube. So it's youtubecom Chicago BACP. Um, looks like that is all the questions. Ginger, thank you as always for um, all the great information and your time, everyone. Thank you for joining us, everyone. I uh, hope you have a great and safe holiday weekend. Thank you so much. I was really glad to be here, Geraldine. Have a great weekend too.